Today we celebrate, we continue to celebrate the festival of Christ the King. I am the most reverend Idika Imeri, an Archbishop of the Church, and I thank you so much. Remember that our services, our broadcast, is part of how we give back to the churches, both the Pentecostal, the Evangelicals, and the traditional churches. And also those of you who are coming from other faith, who are coming from other religions, you, you are uh, welcome to uh, follow us and to attend our services. It will do you a lot of good. It will add more blessings to what you already have. My area of doing business as a priest and as an archbishop is in the area of practical side of life. I use the stories of the Bible to solve human problems. That's what I do. I cure mental illness, depression. I cure illness of different kinds. If you have a business, I make you a business to become a money-making venture instead of something that is stagnated, delayed, and something that you hate to see. I make people to become lucky in life in whatever they do. Not only that, those who don't have children, easily they have kids. When I proclaim and I perform actions for them and their husbands, such actions are things like they are anointed or a word is spoken into them or I just tell them what is going to happen and it comes to pass. The art of divining or the art of discernment, ability to know things, is what runs in me. I give people jobs. If you are looking for a particular kind of job, please call our office or leave us a message or chat with us online and it will happen to you. Let us pray. As we celebrate this feast of Christ the King, Eternal Father, remember also to enjoy the gift of your Son, just as we enjoy Him on the earth. We ask that all of the hosts of heaven join us in proclaiming Him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, both now and forevermore. And all of us on earth, we continue to reap the benefits of He being King, forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 I will continue to emphasize the seriousness of giving to God in our lives. Personally, I know of a fact that I represent God in my generation. Others might as well, I don't know. So giving to me and giving to our mission is very, very important. We use money 
we use material resources to negotiate and also to force the good things of God and the good things of the earth to come to us. Nothing is by nothing. Nothing, nothing just happens. You have to trigger off something for something to happen. Let's ask the Reverend Deacon Victoria to read to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 12. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I want to thank those of you from around the world who are joining us in our broadcast of the service of the of Christ the King from our from our chapel, the chapel of the Archbishop right here. Thank you so much. And many of you have no idea that there are two sides to the life of Jesus. There is the side of devotion to him and there is the side of business which involves money and the building of wealth for his name's sake for yourself whatever you build for yourself become his the kind of king that jesus is is the kind of king that goes to the streets that goes to the boonies, goes to the neighborhood, goes to the suburbs, goes to the city to talk to people, to understand their problems. The problem of humanity was the problem of sin. The most important problem, problem is what Jesus came to handle. And then he showed us the other areas of the interest of God. Jesus primarily came to us as a king. He is a world-class king and the first king on earth. The first person to appear on the earth, to start to do things on the earth, was a king and his name is Jesus. When you read the Bible and you hear of in the beginning, in ancient past, God created the heavens and the earth. The person that that word in Genesis is talking about, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, is the same person that you see in the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 1 is talking about. Is the same person that Hebrew chapter 1 verse 1 is talking about. Is the same person that Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 is talking about. Jesus is the creator God. So he understand the streets. He understand the problems of humanity. That's what really makes him a special kind of a king. He is a king that you can easily approach. Remember when, when blind Bartimaeus was shouting for help? What happened? Jesus stopped. People told Bartimaeus not to disturb Jesus. But Jesus told him to come. Remember the story of Zacchaeus climbing the tree because he was a dwarf, a midget. And <laughs> <laughs> Emily used to sing to me Zacchaeus was a little a little man 
A little man was he. A little man was he. Yep. And Jesus, <laughs> in spite of the crowd, told Zacchaeus, come down. And one thing I saw about Jesus, there were, there were places where Jesus judged the Jewish people. Why? Because of their lack of conscience. But majority, 99% of the time, he never judged anybody. In fact, you don't even, in a lot of places that you would have thought that Jesus would ask the people to repent, he didn't. In a lot of places that you would have you will have thought that Jesus is going to challenge Satan, challenge demon, challenge evil spirit. He didn't. It's very mysterious. He focused on his kingdom, the kingdom of his father, the kingdom of the Holy Ghost. He had one mission, to lay down to humanity that if you want to be a leader, if you want to be a ruler, this is the way to do it. Some people say that certain people lose election because they didn't go to the streets. They didn't go to the suburbs. They didn't go to the boonies. They did not talk to the common people. Great leaders go to the poor, the middle class, the rich, the wealthy. They connect with them and they go to them. That's one of the things that I really enjoy about Vladimir Putin. I mean, leave the other side of his, that is politics and warfare. There is a side of the man that I really like. He goes to play soccer with young kids. He goes swimming with them. He goes to teach them things, how to be a man. He picks the, the, the boys and teach them how to ride horses, hide and seek. Those things that that you don't expect a president to do shows up at their games shows up at their schools that's what makes the russian to be fascinated with him is the same thing that people are fascinated with trump is his ability to connect with people on the streets ability to go to the suburbs ability to eat with people in ordinary places that's what attracts people. Ability to say his mind the way he feels about things. Ability to challenge government and possibly break their laws and let everybody go have access to money. That's what fascinates people. It's the same thing with Tinibu of Nigeria. What fascinates me about him is his ability to know what is happening on the ground. Forget about that people are telling you that things are hard in Nigeria. That's a lie from hell. Things are not hard. Things are hard for people who don't want to work or people who don't want to create business for themselves. But Tinibu knows exactly what is happening on the ground. So whatever kind of game you want to play, he knows. It's only kings that are like Jesus. Someone who can walk into the streets, cast demons out of people. His mother can come to him and tell him, look, these people have run out of wine in their wedding. Do something about it. And he gave them more wine than they can ever drink. He performs so many types of miracles. It takes somebody who really hears the drumming of the ant, somebody whose ear is on the ground to be this kind of a king. Not somebody who sits on his throne, but he was Anikuya Ezena Puapo. Just like we say, Maona Nejenja, Maona Puapo. Like there are two kinds of spirits. Spirit that sits in one place and spirit that goes and come. Like myself. Uh -huh. Like myself, Abu Maona Puapo. Uh -huh. I'm a spirit that can leave and come back. What I mean by that? Ability to be in different places at the same time. Ability to go places. To go and see things for yourself. Because of this kind of lifestyle, God said, I will appoint him a portion with the great 
That's what makes a real king is greatness. There is no king that is all by himself. There is allies. And here, the Father has an ally. Jesus has an ally. God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. And us. Who is your king? Who have you chosen to be your king? Who? In some of the brokers that will come out today, you will see it broken into four parts. What we have taught so far about Jesus as a king. The king must do something for you to know he's a king. A king relates with strong people and with great people, with the mighty ones, at the same time with the poor and needy, making sure that their problems are solved. If that king doesn't go to go and solve it himself, he appoints leaders to do it for him. And he makes sure that he monitors and makes sure that they do exactly what he says. So that the poor and the middle class and the rich and the wealthy are not cheated. That's the real king. A real king comes to make sure that people enjoy privileges. And that's exactly how the kingdom of Jesus is. The kingdom of his father. Our father. Jesus belongs to us. Please let me tell you something. When people begin to tell you that they own Jesus, just tell them to shut the hell up. They don't own Jesus. We own him. He's, he belongs to us. He's our own. He's our king and our brother. Our father appointed him to be our king on the earth. He was already a king with the father in heaven. Don't let other people claim that they, they are the owners of Jesus. That the Messiah belongs to them. He doesn't belong to them. When it comes to this one, I'm envious, jealous, and I guard it with all of my heart. Jesus belongs to us. If you want Jesus, come to us. We will show you Jesus. And how Jesus is. And what he can do for you. Don't let some churches that tell you that Jesus is theirs. Are you serious? When did he become yours? Have you ever seen him? Most of those people have never seen Jesus. They've never seen his mother. They've never seen his brothers and sisters. I have seen him. A lot of people go to preach about him. I don't come to preach about him. I come to talk about him. Because I know him. He knows me. Oh. So it's not, a, it's not a matter of somebody coming to tell you Bible stories mm -hmm. about Jesus. I don't want to be talking about somebody that I don't know nothing about. I've never seen. Mm. God has come to tell you to come and give you Holy Ghost. Come and anoint you. All that kind of foolishness. Have you seen the Holy Spirit? They have never. I have. God has come to tell you stories about angels in their dreams. Well, I have not seen angels in my dreams. I have seen them physically, talk to with them, walk with them, hold their hands. So don't talk to me about the angels when you've not seen one. I have. Others will tell you stories about fairies and mermaids. About people in many universes in our universe. Others come to tell you stories about gatekeepers, gods and goddesses. Have they seen them? No, I have seen them. I've talked with them. They've talked with me. What has come to tell you ghost stories? Have they seen ghosts? I've seen them. I've talked with them. My world is a world of human and world of spirits and world of beings who are in between. This morning, the king has sent me to tell you that he's with you. Now, if I got rigged, ma, things are going to be better because the Amen. king has summoned me. Jesus, the king, has summoned Amen. me to tell you that things are going to be better for you. That you should not look at Amen. the politics. Yeah, leave the politics of your country. Amen. Don't focus on it. It will not do you. It will not bring you a dime. It will not bring you one penny. Stop looking at your politicians for what they can do for you. 
Everybody come to look yeah. for his own, his or her own survival, or the survival of a group, and then it trickles down to other groups who can vote next time. Stop thinking that the person who is representing you in Washington D.C. or in Accra, Ghana, or in Lagos, or in Nairobi, or in Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Bahamas, Norway. Stop thinking that all these people are coming to come and save you. Since you were born, has any of them saved you? Has any of them put money in your pocket? No. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. Leave these people alone. <laughs> Let people stop using you. We call it being used. Don't be a, 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 a what do we call that thing on, on a cake? What do we call that that white thing? Is that a frosting or what? Icing. Yeah. Stop being an icing. Stop being an icing on other people's cake, please. Stop being an icing on other people's cake. God warned me and told me not to be that anymore. Stop being a carpet in front of the door, a doormat that people come to wipe their feet and pass on to do other business and they don't care about you. Stop being a doormat. Please. The king wants you to represent him on the earth. When people, how do you represent Jesus on the earth? Do you think you represent Jesus by carrying Bible like Jehovah Witnesses and like Mormons and the rest of them going about to preach? That's how we, rep that's how we represent Jesus. Who cares? And there is a place for that. If you want to do evangelism, go and meet Mary. Go and meet Mary, the Queen Mother. She is the one in charge of uh, evan evangelism in our mission. She understands that side. But you cannot even do good evangelization without the business side of the gospel, which is, do you own businesses? Are you making money? Do you own wealth? You see, portions, spoils, kings go to war and they take spoils. Spoils from warfare. How do they take it? They beg for it? No, they seize it. Yep. That's why a lot of people want to be in position of leadership because they will seize their money. They will seize their material resources and enjoy life and give no account to anybody. Yeah, there's a place for that. Our king is the same. You never heard of where did Jesus get his money? Have you ever asked yourself who gave Jesus money to the extent that he had a banker? Huh? To the extent that there was a CBJ, Central Bank of Jesus, Public Non Liability Corporation. Who were giving him money? <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself who were giving Jesus money? Was it his disciples? No. It was the rich and the mighty that he mingles with. It wasn't the poor. You'll get nothing out of poor people except headache and problems and betrayal and death. Constantly when poor people come to you, that's how you know that you're dealing with poor people. Whenever they come to you, they come to beg you for money. They come to tell you a problem. That's how you know the people are poor. Then do everything to avoid them. Anytime they call you, anytime they talk to you, they are going to tell you one problem or the other. They will never tell you something nice, something that will elevate you. They will never give you business idea to go and make money. If you tell them business ideas for them to go and make money, it's too much for them. They have abandoned them. They always tell you problems. Anybody in your life that they always tells you problems, abandon them. After helping them one, twice, three times, that's the end. Let them go. Those people are poor. Not just that they are poor and broke, they also have the spirit of poverty. They love it. They are beggars. You don't need those kind of people. You don't, you don't use poor people to make money. They are already broke. If you go after poor people's money, God will punish you. 
and the forces behind them will kill you. Leave poor people alone. They are already, they are, they are only done. They will remain like that from generation to generation. You can't solve poor people's problem. Why? They don't want their problem to be solved. They love that tradition of being poor. And many of you do not know when, when you should stop crossing the line to them. If, you, if you've done everything to get out of poverty, avoid poor people. If your family members are poor, help them once, twice, help to establish them whatever they do with their life, that's their problem, and avoid them after that. Just leave them alone. If not, they will drag you to poverty. They will take and take and take and take and take and take until you become poor like them. And then they start laughing at you. I know what I'm talking about. So any human being in your life whose job is to call you and to take, 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 take. They are not there to help to protect your money. Victoria and I in Las Vegas, we went shopping at the, at the, at the fashion show mall. And everything that girl was doing was to make sure that she saves me money. That's one thing I've learned about her. She made sure that she saves me money. I have gone shopping with people and they almost bought the whole, the entire mall. I have to beg them and say, can you keep these ones back? They don't know how to control themselves. When I take people eating, I want you to pick quality food, but not too much. Our body does not need all that food. They will consume and consume and consume and then carry very big, heavy boxes home to go and eat. It's very rare before you see me carry food from the hotel from where I, I went to eat home. I don't. I leave it there. I just eat a little bit. Something nutritious. Something that I can get nutrients from. That's it. Fish, meat, vegetables, a glass of wine. And I'm gone. Others will sit there and consume and consume and consume until the food starts to consume them. That sign of poor people, that's how poor people do. They will, even, they will take more than they can eat. When are we going to stop? The desire of Jesus is to give you privileges, protection, provisions, and to give you power for you to go and create wealth for him. See, salvation without money and wealth will only get you into a, a, into heaven. But it will make your Christianity something that people will hate to practice. Nobody hates a poor... No, no, nobody loves a poor Christian. If you follow Jesus and you are poor, nobody is going to listen to that kind of gospel. They will think that you are preaching the gospel out of a sense of desperation, out of a sense of uh, satisfying in your position as a poor person. That's what you are using to comfort yourself. So when they see Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and Assemblies of God and Deeper Life and all these churches going out to go and preach, they look at your clothing. They look at the kind of car you drive. They, they ask you, Where do, what kind of job do you do? And you can't say because you are ashamed of yourself, that all you have is your religion. People start to avoid you. Some people were talking, this one said I'm a doctor at the gym. This one said I'm a medical doctor. This one said I'm a pharmacy. This one said I'm this. This one said I'm that. When they ask me what I do, I say I buy big lands. Everybody say, hey! Everybody's mouth dropped. This one is a surgeon. This one is a lawyer. Everybody talk. But when he reaches me, my own turn, I told them, I specialize in buying lands. Here? Yeah? Immediately, they start asking me, well, where are the land? Can we invest in you? I say, yes. Here's, here's my number. You can call me. I need big money to invest in lands. If, if some natural resources are discovered in it, you follow and share. Nobody said that to the doctors or to the surgeons, or to the lawyers, or to the bankers. Everybody were quiet. But when I say that I buy land, 
Everybody sat up. And that is what I do. I buy lands. A lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Land, land <laughs> shouts, land talks. Yeah. That's what kings do. Kings are known primarily for owning all the land in their territory. Where they where, where they preside. They are known for having a lot of land. In fact, all of it belong to the sovereign king or queen. They have treasure houses full of gold and silver and bronze and diamond. Precious, precious jewelry that you've never seen before. They own mighty armies. If Jesus did not want to be captured by human beings, nobody would have put him to death. It's simply that he's doing it for us to show us. One of the things that I like about Jesus is his, his king lifestyle. They, they like, his kind of rulership is the performance of something. Sacrifice. Sacrificing himself for his people so that he doesn't lose them forever. So that if you want to remain poor, you remain poor. But he will not lose you. But the point is, you'll be a nuisance to him. Because poverty is a nuisance to him. And look at all the poor people who were around Jesus, betrayed him and ran away. With all the rich and wealthy people around Jesus, which is all the women who were with Jesus were wealthy. They were rich. Nicodemus, uh, what is it? Um, Joseph of Arimathea, also the man who owned the upper room where the disciples of Jesus stayed. And a lot of people that we don't even know who they were. Jesus kept his relationship with the rich private. Just look at that kind of a thing. You have to decide which group of people you want to attract, which circle you want to belong. Sacrifice, 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 one time sacrifice, and that's it. One time investment. So what are you willing to invest into? Who are you willing to sacrifice for? Jesus did not go to like other kings do. They take somebody else and sacrifice. He sacrificed himself. So that we can have life and have it abundantly. What he did made the father to say, I will apportion him. I will give him a portion among the among the great. And he shall divide among the strong. Only strong people get wealth. Only great people get a big portion. Don't you want something great in life without using people? Instead, working with people, negotiating with people. The church is not a place for preaching and teaching. A moral institution. Yes, it is. But it's more than that. It's a place where directions are given for people to go out and make money and source for material resources to become great and strong ones. Because those who have gold will make the law. Those who understand the principles of business and they are making money and creating wealth will rule the world. Those who have nuclear weapons, atomic weapons, all kind of weapons that can cause mass destruction will rule the world. So a king has masterfully, every king should have an army a great army. And the armies of Jesus are angels. And there are no armies on earth equal to the armies of Jesus. There is none. 
one angel, just one angel can destroy our universe and everybody in it. One angel. I'm just letting all of you know the kind of Jesus. So the Jesus that you see in the church, <laughs> uh, I can tell you the truth. Many a times I laugh. Not just at the church, at people who don't know the kind of Jesus I follow. Many of you do not even know that God can cause trouble. If you doubt it, go and read Isaiah chapter 45, what God said to Cyrus. You will know that our God also is a troublemaker. If you, if you think you are a troublemaker, you are fooling yourself. When God starts to make his own trouble, you will know what you are, deal, what you are dealing with. The Jesus that was born as a baby king, the Jesus who is king is not ordinary king. If that guy is that destruction, nobody will stand. So what, what you are seeing there, uh, you are going to talk to Jesus, pray to Jesus, you are fooling yourself. When Jesus show up as Jesus, who he really is as king, you will know that you are dealing with something completely different from what you've been seeing in the church about Jesus. It's human being trying to play the role of Jesus. When the real Jesus show up from heaven, in your midst, you will know what you are dealing with or who you are dealing with. That's why he removed himself from a lot of foolishness that people are doing in his name. He doesn't want to partake in it. Don't drag him into that. This is a special king and we celebrate him being king today. I also want to use this opportunity to thank the people of Poland. Uh, my tellers in Poland and the people of Poland for what they are doing. I want to use this opportunity to thank the people of the United States, my country, and especially the people of my state, the state of California and the state of Kansas. Thank you very much. I want to use this opportunity to thank my mother and Coco, Coco, Njakani. Thank you so much. I also want to use this opportunity to thank Sylvia. I want to thank you, Sylvia Dockers. You are the only remaining person, the oldest person the families of Nita. Thank you for being there and covering the family. Follow your king. King Jesus must be followed and Jesus is depending on you for greatness on the earth. Did you hear what God said about Job before Satan? Have you considered my servant Job? Don't you want Jesus to say such thing about you? Have you considered my servant so and so, who is ruling in my name on the earth? Show me one person that God invested into that did not become a world class ruler in their time. For those of you who partake with us in the service of Holy Communion, make sure that the wine that you use are rich and very very rich wine non-alcoholic rich wine if you use the one that has alcohol in it it must be like zero percent or one percent very 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 limited ours is non-alcoholic but very very rich extremely rich very healthy wine. Extremely healthy. We'll 
finish using this. Eternal Father, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, the bread of life. And we give you thanks for us, for we have become the bread of life in his name. For we represent him on the earth. By the celebration of this bread, we call on the body and blood of Jesus to mingle with us. We call on his body to come to us in this celebration. This is wine that human hands have made. It will become for us the drink of life. We call on the blood of Jesus to come to us and to mingle with all that we do these days. The days of his celebration. We ask that the blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness and our names are written in the book of life. And that his blood goes to do warfare on our behalf, making peace between God and humans, between us and gods and goddesses, and every gatekeeper, high and low. We ask that the blood open doors, open gates, open roads, promote us. Amen. Eternal Father, God of all creation, I stand here in the name of Jesus and in the name of the church. I stand here anointed to mediate that which is greater than humans. And so, Father, I ask that your mighty Holy Spirit, all powerful, come from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. O oh, Spirit, O oh, Spirit, O oh, Spirit of the living God, come upon this gift of bread and wine that it will become for us a communion in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Messiah, who in the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took this holy bread, now consecrated and powerful, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, eat ye, this is my body. He also said, Do this in remembrance of me, which means give of your best in order to be the best with me amen 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 and after supper he took the cup filled with wine and he gave it to them and said this cup represent this wine represent my blood that i'm pouring out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin but we realize that his blood maketh it peace. So that where there was poverty, peace is made and prosperity, riches and wealth is accumulated. So that where there was sickness, his body and blood heals. The blood of Jesus is The blood of Jesus is used to do heavy things it is used to undo bad things it is used to Amen. untie what was tied Amen. it is used Amen. to do big things strong things Amen. great Amen. things Amen. Hallelujah. so with this blood in my hand this wine representing his blood I am about to do mighty things. Amen. I'm going to call them out and they will be happening. Amen. If you are going to travel this Amen. week, 
you will never have accident no matter what amen you never have amen. accident in amen. land in land a and c there is no accident number amen. two if your children amen. have been having f and d and c from today with this communion their brain will become sharper they will be thinking amen. faster and will know things better and will have practical ability amen. to turn the intelligence to money from now on that's what is going to happen nobody will amen. be an idiot in your amen. house anymore amen. no child will be living amen. under your roof you, and amen. eating we for free you, without contributing if your son or daughter is a drug addict I am healing your sons and daughters right now of drug problems. Amen. I put an end to it. If you have a child, if you have a child that doesn't want to get a job, from now on, what is happening here is going to arrest that child, and that child is going to get a job and, and stay in that job. Amen. There are some of you who have complained that you want your sons to have a, 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 a to be married to a woman and have children. Your children should not be gays and lesbians. You want your daughter to be married to a man and to have children. What is happening here is doing the job right now. I send what is happening here to go and do that job right now. Amen. Amen. And if you have somebody or you are a, the person that you cannot handle a job, today you are in, in McDonald's, next day you are in Burger King, next day you are in Walmart, next day you are working at Kingsway store, next day you are working at Bata, old Bata of those days, next day you are working oh at a, God. oh God have mercy. Today, what is <laughs> happening here, I send you more non the spirit Amen. of God that is in this place. I send you to go forth and put an end to Waka Waka spirit. And also, yes. if you Amen. are possessed by the habit of prostitution, in Abashawo, and truly, Amen. truly, you want to stop, I am sending more money back, Oga, and put an end to it in your life. Yabri Bonya Yahoo. Even your 419, Amen. like you are somebody that does come. Oh, this is good. And yeah. when you go, Hallelujah. they put you in jail. Then you say, yeah. one year, you come out, you continue. What is happening here, I'm sending it to you. It will come to an end. The money you've already scammed people, you are going to use it to start a business. And you will no longer be scamming people from now on. You will no longer be carrying drugs yeah. for people. Yes. You will no longer Amen. be pimped Amen. as a woman by other people. Amen, most reverend. What is happening in Thank this place so many is free. creating Thank businesses for people. If you want to start yes. a business Amen. and your business to do very well, I am sending them more that is in this place. The spirit that is in this place has left this place to go and get you established, to cool your head down, your brain down, so that you can think right and start that business and maintain that business and that business will never fail. Thank you. If you are a person with Thank conscience you. and you want to be a president of a country, a governor, a judge, the House of Senate, the House of Assembly, or House of Representatives, what is happening here is going to establish you. Come here. They are bando with us here. Come to this chapel and come here and swear an oath that you will do something good. For those that you want to represent, and I'll give you that position. Amen. If you are looking for promotion, Amen. you have not seen it. You've been praying and praying and praying for promotion. I am giving you promotion right now. It is not you saying, you. I receive it, I claim it. You don't need to receive it. You don't need to claim it. The thing is coming to receive you. The thing is coming to claim you. That does it. It's as simple Thank as that. You. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So I don't need your faith in this game. This is not your faith. Amen. I don't need your faith. This has overruled your faith. It has overtaken your faith. Yes. Yes. If you've been looking for a particular job to be in charge, to supervise, to be paid from a hundred thousand.
to 200,000 US dollars or euro or British pound sterling or Canadian dollar or bar, uh, Bahrain uh, or, or man or whatever uh, dinner. If you are looking for a job that will pay you a million dollars a year, I am sending what is in this place, the spirit that is in this place, to go and overtake you and go and tell your name and go and tell the people that you are the one that is qualified for that job more than anybody else. They will throw everybody away and they will bring you in to start that job. Make sure you bring me my yeah. own part. Bring me what belongs to me. Hey, uh hey. -huh. I am Caesar. Give to Caesar what belongs to Amen. Caesar. That is me. Give me my own portion. That is it. If you are looking for a husband or a wife and every relationship you enter into has Mafuka, it didn't work. Every man that you saw, every woman you saw, you thought that is a wife material. They've all failed you. What is happening in this place? I'm sending it to you so that you will date the right person love the right person, marry the right person, start a family with the right person, whether a child is in it or not. You want sweet and happy relationship. It is coming from here and it has come to you. And that is what is going to be happening from now on. Now, with the body of Jesus, I am releasing to every one of you who is sick in any part of your body or you are disabled in any part of your body. This is going to enable you you cannot be disabled when you follow the king, King Jesus. It cannot happen. You cannot be sick when you are in his presence. It cannot happen. Therefore, this is his special presence. And so I am healing everyone, whether you have mental illness or whatever kind of illness, whether it be cancer, whether it be heart attack, diabetes, high blood pressure, whatever it is that you are passing through, I am sending and I ask the spirit that is in this place. This is Alonsi of the highest kind. This is Holy Ghost Alonsi. This is the oracle. David was addressed as the oracle of God. This is where the oracle of God is. From here, all kind of sickness bow at the name of Jesus and they are healed. You are healed and your life is free from sickness so that you can go and get a job. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. When you suffer and you gather, and something come and blow them away, today I put an end to it. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. What is done is done, and nobody can undo it. It is done. Amen. Everybody shout, Amen. 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 You can now pick Amen. the bread and eat it and drink the wine. Every one of you should repeat this. Only good thing will be happening to me. Everybody repeat it. Only good thing will be happening to me. Only good thing will be happening to me. Only good thing will be happening to me. Yes. Okay. I want you to repeat this. I was born to be rich. I was not born to be poor. I Write that down. I was born to be rich. I was, I was born not born to be poor. I was born to be rich. I was not born to be poor. I was born to be rich. I was not born to be poor. I was born to be rich. I was not born to be poor. Therefore, I can never be poor. Say it. Write it down. That is our slogan. I was born to be rich. I was not born to be poor. Therefore, I will not be poor. Therefore, I can never be poor. I can never be poor. Yes, I can never be poor. I can never be poor. May the Almighty God bless you. I was born to be rich. May the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I was born to be rich. I was born to be poor. And the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Amen.
and I want to stand here to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Which day is, is Thanksgiving? Is it this coming week? Friday? Oh. Yes, Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Thursday is Thanksgiving in America. Come and join us to eat. Thursday is when we celebrate the Feast of Eating. We eat a lot, drink a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do on Thanksgiving in America. <laughs> so come and live with us in America so that you can enjoy this kind of thing. It's a big feast. Yeah, we roast whole uh, pig, whole lamb, whole goat, whole cow. We roast the entire thing. <laughs> whole, whole chicken. <laughs> yeah, whole turkey. We got it. So come and join <laughs> America. Yeah, come and join America. Canada had their own in October. So our own is happening this Thursday. That's when the party is <laughs> happening. Yeah, in America. It's a big party. So come and join us. <laughs> Remember that we will be having uh, we will have a short service. We'll have a short service on Thursday morning. Very, very short service. So that I can have opportunity to greet each and every one of you in our broadcast. So with that service, <laughs> yeah, when we have that Thursday service, we will not have Friday service until Sunday. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Remember to oh, go to goodbye. our remember to go to our ministry site and go and donate generously for thanksgiving please people should rush to our website and go and donate generously we need money to carry out our project we need money to pay rent in certain places we need money to pay our bills so make money available and god bless you bye bye god bless you thank you thank you Thank you, thank you to everyone. Have a blessed one. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Enjoy the rest of the week. Happy Thanksgiving. 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 Happy